Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. This is the second part of our module on performance settings. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at all of the things we didn't cover in the first part, specifically configuring our desktop environment, configuring services and programs so that we can resolve performance issues, mobile computing performance issues, and configuring power in our Windows 7 environment. There's quite a few things you can configure in your desktop environment. And some of these things can have a dramatic impact on the performance of your system, depending on the type of hardware and software that you're running. The first is wallpaper. This is what sits on the back of the desktop. That's why I say maybe we should call it desk paper. It's not really on the wall. It's on the desktop of our computer. And we can add and remove and change the way that looks. This may have an impact if you're using remote desktop software that isn't smart enough to get rid of that information that's in the back Background, it may have to transfer a lot of data through that link. So just by changing your wallpaper to a solid color may improve performance if you're connecting, connecting to it over a remote connection. Also in the Start menu, you've got a lot of different options. Almost everybody uses the default Start menu. But there's some real nice, in some ways, hidden little features that you can turn on that may really improve your access to different items that are inside of your computer. There's also in Windows 7 some built-in gadgets. I'll show you how you can turn some of those on that are always sitting there floating on your desktop. They can give us information about what time it might be. We can find out what the weather is. And there's some other very nifty and specific gadgets you can add as well. And lastly, we'll look at the icons. You can turn on and turn off certain icons from even appearing on your desktop. That might improve your performance a bit. You can find things that you're looking for a little bit faster. Let's look at some of these and how we might configure them in our Windows environment. To be able to change a number of the things on our desktop, we can simply right mouse click anywhere in our desktop and choose Personalize. And from here, we're able to change our desktop background, the Windows color, sounds, screen savers that might be configured here. You can also change desktop items. If you would like to see user's files and the computer and the control panel and the network option pop up every time you look at your desktop, you click OK. And now all of those icons will be right there on your desktop and available to you. If you want to get rid of them, you can do that as well. So there's some other tweaks in here with mouse pointers, changing the account picture that's used. If you're the administrator on this machine, you might want to change that. If you're another user, you could change to a different icon, one that's either on the computer or one that you can download from somewhere else. On our Start menu, instead of clicking the left mouse button on the Start menu, I'm going to click the right mouse button and choose Properties. And you're going to see quite a few properties pop up here. The one I'm most interested in showing you, and the one that's probably going to save you a lot of time, is right here in this How to, to Customize How Links, Icons, and Menus Look, click Customize. And this is where you can decide how this works in your Start menu. So if you would like to have the Control plan Panel display as a menu, you can do that in your Start menu. Since you're probably going to be the administrator on a number of these, you'll want to scroll all the way down to the bottom and change this so that your system administrative tools can be displayed on the All Programs menu and on the Start menu. That's nifty. And here's why how it works. I'm going to click OK and OK. Now when I click the Start menu, notice that Administrative Tools is a link right there off the Start menu now. And because I changed the way Control Panel works, all of your Control Panel icons become links. I don't have to jump into the Control Panel to access those particular pieces of the Control Panel. So that might save you a click or two. Certainly saves you some room on the desktop. And if you are spending a lot of time going to your Administrative Tools and pulling up your services, it's only a click or two away now. And when you click on that, everything else disappears. A little bit cleaner workspace to, to work with, especially if you're doing a lot of this day to day. Another built-in feature is the gadgets. And if I right mouse click, it is an option right here off the desktop to enable gadgets. And there are some that are built in already into Windows 7, a calendar, a clock, a CPU meter. I can double click on these and start them up. You can see they're added to the desktop. And I can move them around anywhere I would like. And you can even choose a little button next to it for options to determine how you'd like the clock to look. Maybe you'd like a little neon action going on there. And let's show the second hand as well. And now it changes on our screen a little bit. There's also an option to get more gadgets online where there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gadgets to choose from. Some that are very, very specific. Some are very generalized like the ones here. But you'll probably find quite a few that apply to the way that you like to work in your Windows environment. 
you will on occasion run into a service that's running on your computer that is not running very well. Maybe it's crashing, maybe it's having performance problems, and you'd like to change what happens whenever there's an issue with this service. If you go right into the event log and the task manager, you can start to see how those processes are running, how much CPU utilization they're taking, and are there messages sent to the event log. But you can also go right to the property itself from your control panel, administrative tools and services, go right to the recovery tab, and define how the service acts and is affecting the rest of the system if it runs into a problem. There's also this dependencies tab that gives you a feel for other things that must be running to have this service run as well. That way you'll know if a other service fails what it might affect all the way down the line. Let's have a look at some of these. Let's have a look at our services. I'll choose now the administrative tools that I've now put right here on my menus. And let's go to our services. And when this comes up, I'm going to make it full screen so we can really see everything. And I'll make it so that we can see the explanation of these. You can see there are quite a few services on this computer. And if I drill down into any one of these, I do have an option for recovery and an option for dependencies. Under the Recovery tab, I've chosen the Peer Name Resolution Protocol service that's running on this computer. After the first failure of this service, what do we do? Do we take no action? Do we restart the service? Do we run a program? Or do we restart the entire computer? You can also choose the second failure. And then every failure after that, what do you do? This may be a good place to have another program run that would send you a message and then restart the service. Maybe it completely restarts the computer because if this particular service fails, we need to reset from scratch and have it start the computer over. You can see the reset fail count after one day's in a restart service after five minutes. There's also enable actions for stops with errors and what you can do. There's where you would add where to put run programs in and the information to add to the command line so that you can send information from this service that describe perhaps how many times it's failed over the time frame that we're sending. There's also this Dependencies tab. So we know that this Peer Name Resolution Protocol is a service that requires the Peer Networking Identity Manager. You can see that that Identity Manager has to be running to have the Peer Name Resolution Protocol running. If we lose this particular component, we're also going to lose this service as well. There are other services that also depend on this service. So we can see those listed here, the Peer Networking Grouping and the PNRP Machine Name Publication Service. So if we lose the Peer Networking Identity Manager, that means we lose the Peer Name Resolution Protocol. And then that means that we lose the Peer Networking Grouping and the PNRP Machine Name Publication Service. It's all right here on this one screen. So if something does fail or you're thinking something might fail, you'd be able to tell exactly what that's going to affect. If you use a mobile device, then you know there are a number of performance challenges ahead of you. One of those is relating to power. Whenever you don't have power, it has a dramatic impact on the performance and perhaps how you would like the performance to be of that mobile device. If you're on a very long flight and you're worried your battery's not going to last, you might want to turn down a lot of the features of your laptop so that you can work on the document that you're trying to create. If you're one that is running a graphics application and you're on a mobile device, you may not care much about the battery. We need to turn it up so this graphical application is going to work optimally on our system. System. If you are losing power, you may notice that your computer goes into a different state than when it does have power. So if it's flipping around or you're having a problem relating to performance, make sure you're plugged in. Make sure you have power on that laptop. You can also look at all the settings for power under your control panel. There are power options right there. We're going to look at some on my laptop computer. I also have options to think about on mobile devices relating to heat, especially how the heat affects the CPU of the computer. Most CPUs and most laptops are built around the ability to detect how hot it's getting inside of that laptop. And as it gets hotter, it will turn on fans inside of your laptop. Sometimes it gets so hot that the CPU slows down so that it does not overheat. Obviously, that can be a performance problem as well. So always make sure that your computer is running optimally, that you've got good airflow, that your cooling system is going to work optimally. And then just recognize that if it does get too warm, it's entirely possible the performance of the desktop might go down to about half 
speed so that it does not burn the entire thing up inside and you don't create more problems for yourself. If you plug in to power, you may still have those issues because it's still going to be hot inside of that laptop. So a very important consideration, especially if you're using processes or programs that use a lot of CPU or they're really causing the heat to increase inside of that mobile device. To configure those power options, you go right to the control panel. There is a control panel power option setting. And you may want to adjust exactly how the power is being used on your computer. There's a balanced plan that's set up on your computer already and a power saver plan. Let's dive into those and see what's really involved with setting some of these power options. Here's a Windows 7 professional laptop that I have. I'm going to go into my control panel. And there is an options in here for our power options. And under the power options, you can select a power plan. Indeed, there's balanced and power saver on this computer. Let's And there's a high performance as well. Let's look at the plan settings for balanced. We can see a lot of different options. Turn off the display after five minutes. Turn it off after 10 minutes if we're plugged in. If we're on battery, put the computer to sleep after 15 minutes. If we're plugged in, never put the computer to sleep. There are also advanced power settings available that really allow you to tweak different settings. Here's one that's specific to a laptop the power buttons and the lid. If you close the lid, what happens? If you're not if you're on a battery, go to sleep. If you're plugged in, maybe we don't want to go to sleep. Maybe we'd like to do something else. We can change these plans by specifying a higher a priority here. We've got different authentication. I can hibernate or shut down. I've got different options for that. Maybe when I push the power button, what do I do if I'm on battery versus plugged in? So you've got a number of different settings. If you're on a plane and you want to optimize this, maybe you'd like to change from the power that you're on right now. Maybe you'd like to change to more of a power saver plan. So we can choose the power saver option. And now our computer goes into a very different plan that's really going to turn things off the display two minutes if you're on the battery. If you have 10 minutes and nothing's happened, go to sleep. So you can see additional functionality and, and really customized to really optimize exactly how much battery you might have left inside of the computer. We can also, as you saw, have settings for the high performance. And the high performance plans may never turn things off. On battery, never go to sleep. If you're plugged in, never go to sleep. Just depends on what you need at that particular time, how close a power source might be for you, or how much battery you might have left inside of your laptop. It's review time for our performance settings. Our first question, which services properties tab controls how a service reacts when it fails? If you recall, we were setting the options to restart, to not restart, to restart your computer. And that was all in the recovery tab. The next question, how do most laptops react when temperatures rise? Most laptops, when things are getting a little bit hot inside of the case, they slow down so that the heat does not damage anything inside of that laptop. And the last question, where can you find the configuration options for creating your own power profile? Well, those can be easily found in your control panel under the power options. That covers this last half of our performance settings. We've gone through configuring our desktop environment, configuring our services and our programs, especially when there are problems, our mobile computing performance, and how we can customize the power to get the most out of our mobile devices. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free Microsoft videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or much more, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.